border. And we like got here too. And um, it's being recorded live at RCTV. And you can see it on Verizon 33 and Comcast Channel 22. And look for it at www.rctv.org. Um, the first order of business was a notice of intent at 7 o'clock for 1503 Main Street, Lot A, Map 60, Lot 11, Castellano. And they have canceled, do I hear, a uh, yeah, motion, motion to, to continue? For the next meeting. Yep. I'll second motion to continue. 1503 Main Street, Lot A, Map 60, 60 Lot 11, Castellano. I'll second. All those in favor? Make a motion to continue uh, NOI 270 0704 Main Street, Lot B, Max 60, Lot 12, Castellano. I'll second. All those in favor? Okay, not being 715, um, we're going to go to old new business, and do we want to discuss 35 Arcadia Avenue? Um, this is not on your agendas, uh, folks. So uh, this is th these things came up. Three things came up. So 35 actually have. I got a call that there was some clear cutting out there, and I wasn't ready to set up that one yet. So let me just look for the um, map geo. Arcadia. Oh, you I, don't know. I heard about it just just today. Uh, call came in that there was a lot of clear cutting going on in this yeah. area, and as you can see, it's right next to the Yavashona yeah. River. And we have in the past called Beyond Summer and Willow uh, Perennial Stream. Correct. So it's mm -hmm. Perennial Stream. Correct. And it came in today. I didn't have a chance to go down and look at it, but I'm not sure if any of the members have been driving past there or know anything about it. Do you do you know it's up for sale or something? Or no, it? it's um, I don't know. I just I did see some activity with cutting there. I've driven down that street a couple of times to so look at the, the zero low metal property mm -hmm. progress, and I didn't see anything. Where's your little metal? Oh, it's right here on the corner. Yeah. I didn't oh, see anything right cut, cut, getting cut there because <coughs> usually when I come out from going down to zero low meadow, I go up um, Stewart Road and take a left on Ed Edgemont. So coming out on back on, on Arcadia, it would be pretty obvious, I think. So you got the call today, Chuck? Yeah. Uh, my plan is to go out there tomorrow and see what's going on and uh, make a report to the commission but uh, you know, obviously they need a permit to cut down trees in that proximity. Not sure uh, how many they've cut down at this point but this is the old, we call this the DC move, don't we? The DC? DC. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know. When they cut down <laughs> the tree <laughs> first, no. or they clear cut first, and then it's discovered, and so you know you can't have them plant 35-year-old trees. So that's the problem, um, and that's one of the reasons why we ask that not only is the homeowner we hold accountable, but we hold the company accountable because the company is always out there first, and they should know the rules and regulations of the town they're working in. That's all I have about 35 Arcadia Ave. Um. So this is something that was brought to our attention? It's brought to my attention today. I called up the uh, the reporter, not a reporter, but the, some, the person that dropped the dime and called the office. And the uh, he said it's happening right now. It's, it's a lot of tree activity. <laughs> I've been trying to 
going to get a diamond here for years. <laughs> Let me ask you, but that's not an active um, application before the Conservation Commission. If I went out there and just to look what would be the proper protocol as a member of the Conservation Commission if I went out to investigate the cutting and the extents of the cutting on that private property? Well, I think you have the right to tell them to stop and they can agree or not agree with you. I mean, I have the same authority as as that also. But, but would I have to actually knock on the door and notify someone to get permission to actually walk out from behind yeah, the yard? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, would I should. have to have that first before I entered on private property? It's not you can, like, you can you're you're saying it's not like an application where all correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. You can when walk up to the door and you knock on the door. If someone's out in the field and you say, "Hey, what's going on?" Right. You and they call you over. Just walk over. What if no one's there? You're right. It's Do not enter. Yeah. No. It's just yeah. That's the same. Same for everyone. That's the same for everyone in town. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. You just can't. Right. Go on someone's property. I don't well, do that. Right. Well, yeah, it's not like an application where right. we have it in the bylaws that. I, w I would think it would be prudent for somebody to have some identification saying that they were on this commission to do that. I think Chuck Well, you say. Thank God. Now that you mention it. Now that you mention it. Yeah, now that you mention it. I just said it. <laughs> I didn't think of this, but uh, MACC did. There you go. We just flash that. I'm sure you're going to get a cup of coffee. Spell bar bar. <laughs> These came in from MACC, IU membership, gives you the benefits on the back, but uh, that's something. Oh, it's not a badge and a gun. I don't have a something. badge, or I don't have a badge, and I've been here for seven years, so. We don't have any letter. I have nothing. Yeah, sometimes I... You know, when wonder I wonder why they're taking my word for it. But, uh, when we did well, because nobody would say they are that. They're building inspector. We give you a time. No one's going to say that to the company. There have been times when I've done work and I've had a letter and put it on my dashboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't we don't have that here. So. Then she give us cards. Yeah. Yeah. The only reason why I asked that question is because if it's clearly a violation of, of our, our bylaw, then there's a violation that's occurring. So I didn't know what. So what I do is I, if they're going to be difficult and the action's happening, just call the police. And I wait there for the police to come. And when it's safe, they have to stop. But if in the middle of cutting a tree down, right. that has to finish. Right. Chuck, could you remind us for that particular pump boundary is? On this one, 35? Yeah. It's a 204. So we'll just, I can measure it out. Um, this here. Could you show the aerial? Too, just so? Yeah. I'll show that. I think this is a really big one. Yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> this is, I can do that again. I, I line and scroll down on the, it's still, it's going to do it, but I'll just, there you go. Yeah. Oh, that's, no way. No. That's, that's not right. It's 200 feet. It says laid out. Whoa, if you do whoa. zero, it says 284. <laughs> no. no. So, let's try again. <laughs> oh, just fixed it. 133. So we're getting 200 feet way back to the line. That's about, yeah, 200 feet to the center line of the road. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, 200 feet way back to the line. Can you uh, just show the aerial? Is like the, the back all wooded or? It usually is back there. Most of that. It's at least some there, line so of trees are good at this, along the top of that bank. Oh. Is that working for you? I mean, it doesn't seem like there's many. Even more friendly, more concerning, but. All right.
you have an idea um, the time of day you might be out there tomorrow, like sometime during the morning, late morning, or early afternoon? Uh, morning, I you know, it's going to go out usually around 9, 30, 10. Okay. I'll try to be there. All right. You can uh, call me before and okay. make sure. So that's uh, site visit and see what's going on. Next is uh, when I was, well. Uh, 7.15, do I have a motion for notice of intent 278-0709, 125, and 126? Is it a circle? They're continuing as well. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to continue. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, 107 Main Street, check. 107 Main Street, the um, owner, Michael Palmer, was in, uh, sent a certified letter asking him to come to this meeting and discuss some uh, of the work that's, that's happening at his site. So I don't have... Have current pictures, but I'm going to start off by showing you the pictures from uh, I guess 2011 or 12. Some of you might have been on the commission at at that uh, time, and you can fill in anything that I'm missing. But um, this one picture um, just so. What's, what this picture shows is in the background that um, tan cube is the dumpster enclosure, and behind it seems to be an approved gravel area, so with curbing. Remind me the property. Yeah, is 107, 107 Main Street. It's a restaurant. It used to be Sam's Bistro. It's Fusilli's. Okay. Okay. Oh, Fusilli's. Okay. Yeah. Fusilli's. Yeah. And this machinery also is, is part of what's going on here. So we have this plan and uh, let's see what this is. the next picture is. It just shows you a view. Um, this is the back of the building and it just shows you the fence line, the fact that there's a tree there that was mentioned in the order of conditions, this big tree to the right or to your left. Um, and it, uh, it's still standing. The curbing uh, and the undergrowth in this area has died off. Curbing, um, I don't remember seeing it. So it may be gone. It may be buried. Because uh, one of the things that's happening out there is there's some activity in the back. Uh, it looks like that this area has been extended. This is. This is a picture just to show there's a fence again. So this is the area where we're where we're looking and just beyond it, you can just see at the bottom there's a little bit of the um, gravel and beyond that is probably the curbing in that open area that's behind the dumpster. Well, this is where the gravel is? No, it's just to the it's just to the left of it. So I'm going to show the plan now, and that might be a little bit easier to okay. understand. So it's a Sullivan plan from 2011. And let me just see. And so the area we're talking about is uh, right back here. Here's the dumpster enclosure. Here is, I believe, the curving. Here's our tree, another tree, and then there's the fence. Um, what looks like is happening now is we we have uh, so there are bounds and bushes. There seems to be something like this going on in a cleared area with crush and run out there, which is creating additional 
parking storage, snow storage area, I'm not sure, but we're getting a call from some of the neighbors. This has created uh, a drainage issue, which drains into, if I, if I brought it down, you can see it, but right here is a sewer easement, and it's open in this area here, Yep. and there's a culvert right there where it comes in. Um, so everything's draining this way. These people, although there's a really low depression in the back here, they're saying they're getting flooding a lot. They're conscious of whatever happens in this property directly affects them, and they want the town to kind of be on top of this. There are no permits for this additional work. So what I see from this plan that is part of the order of conditions is this gravel area here and these shrubs. It says river rock in here. And I think that's what was going to happen uh, in between the, the curbing. It, there's no trees there, I think. Uh, there's no shrubs there. What would be no the trees, point of that? And there's only something, uh, vegetation here, and a lot of this is missing also. Chuck, does it, <clears throat> the property extend further back or further to yeah, the... Yeah, it goes, it goes okay. up here like yeah. that, and then it goes out to the street on Main Street. And where's the jurisdictional? So... It's the stream, and is there anything? The stream, and it, there's something up in this area here. Okay. So this might be a buffer zone activity. Now, when I had the opportunity to talk to the neighbor that made the call in the first place, I got the town alerted to this. I did say that there's no permit currently on this project, but we haven't looked at it, and it might be allowable, There's, but you know, you'd have to get your permit first. So right now, Mr. Palmer has uh, done this work without the commission's knowledge. So I sent out that certified letter. I haven't heard back on the certified letter, but Mr. Palmer did ch uh, talk to Julie Mintz here. Town, uh, um, she's a town planner, and he, they're in contact. I asked that if she contacts him again or he contacts back, that make sure he understands that not only conservation's looking to talk to him, but so it's the building department. <clears throat> Just with what's going on, or, and, and do you have any understanding from when? Don't mind. Came to twenty five. Twenty five. Thirty five. So this was before my time, or I wasn't involved. Really, but why? The, mm -hmm. the why box. did the curbing go back? And there's this gravel area. Was there no curbing? So my understanding, there? this project came into effect. Just looking through the old plan, and I, I don't want to kind of. We need to look at this under our, under our regulations. Yeah. This was approved under the old regulations, where it only takes one indicator of wetland to create uh, to, to create a wetland line. And this is the wetland line right here. Now, I, I don't know if you guys remember um, Meisner Brem, that guy that came in, and he also did um, Border Road. That's the guy that did that very small lot on Border Road with a big pile of dirts in the back next to the highway. Okay, yeah. He did this project too. Okay. So, you know, it's, so he knows what he's talking about. And I think what I hear from these guys is that when we're, you know, obviously when you're, when you're looking for one indicator instead of two to back up the first indicator, you, you know, you're driving the wetland line upgrading. Yep. And it's, it's drier than it should be. So, this, this area here to me was snow storage. I don't know exactly why. But then why plants, plants it, right? Yeah. But, um, you know, now back here, I mean, all, everything on Main Street doesn't have enough parking. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it makes sense that it would be snow storage, but then it wouldn't make sense that you put plants in it, right? Like, mm, not really. Not really snow there. I mean, yeah. well, but so why put the curb behind it? I don't know. I, I, was, I was wondering the same the, thing. The, the whole thing doesn't make sense. Is that about a line, the 25 foot line? No, one's 25. It's 25 foot Z and B based on the one indicator. And the one just next to it was the 30 35. 35. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so if you could, oh now understanding the pictures a little bit more. So that line that you have, the square area that's clear cut, where's the gravel that the crushed stone and, and the, the backhoe part? Backhoe. Right. So when I was there, mm -hmm. backhoe was parked back here. 
Okay. On the pavement. On the pavement. There's a truck. I don't know what they call that kind of truck. It's like a it's like a box. It's like it's not a box truck. It's smaller. This is a giant delivery produce type box truck. Storage truck. Yeah. Okay. Across here, so you can't see what's going on. Um, but this is the area that's been expanded. Okay. All right, and that's why you're saying you can't see the curbing or any of that stuff. And I think it's been all altered in there. Yeah. And um, so, and there's, you know, the trees are gone, and there's, you know, more activity here. And so I was hoping Mr. Palm would come in and tell us what's going on. But, you know, building, planning, everyone needs a document. So when you're altering a lot, you need, you know, site review. And it's, that's up to them, but that may trigger site review, so I'm sure they got to figure out what's going on. Okay. Chuck, can we just re ask him to to give us a current plan versus the as built plan that was approved? Yeah. And have him come in and talk to us? Uh, yeah, that's the first step, talk to him. Uh, I haven't had that opportunity. So that's my that's my first step. And I think it, it has to happen, and it's just a matter of time. Like I said, there's two other departments that get a hold of them. Whatever they want from them can't move forward until we're all satisfied. So he's he needs to comply. So and that's how I see it. Okay. We good? Yep. <coughs> Starting the year off strong. Well. So 720, we have a notice of intent 270-0712, 28 into Vail Terrace. Map 25, lot 217, rain. Yep. Um, so I think the last time I was here, um, there wasn't the notice of intent number. Correct. Um, that's since been in place. And, um, I think. Yeah. I think we were okay with, with everything the last time. We just needed the, um, the um, Sorry, I forget the, the official term you guys call it. The, 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 um, the notice, yeah, we just needed the, the demands for one do the actual job. Yeah, so we were waiting, waiting on the number, um, and we, I think we had told you that we, we I think we were happy with everything. I mean, this is my yeah. but we were happy yeah. with everything. You could start preparing the, the um, right. order of conditions. Did you sure. also change from a, 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 a knee wall foundation to to Alaska tubes? No? That was, that was uh, 30 Azalea. Okay. That was a request for a minor wall change. Okay. So just to back up, we're going to, so this is uh, Mr. Ring came in last, last meeting, and he's proposing an addition to his single family house, and he is 75 feet away from the mm -hmm. wetland. <coughs> Proposing to infiltrate all the runoff into a 500 gallon, I think it's 500 gallon, I'm just guessing, uh, 500 gallon uh, detention uh, tank. And um, there is some, there was some flags in the back that we didn't want to approve. So during right. this, this plan here, we connected four with seven. And there was also, what I got in my notes was there was some trim pieces and pallets back there, mm -hmm. and we were requested to have those removed as part of this um, order of conditions. So I think I saw that in the order of conditions. Yeah, three things though, right? There was so yard pallet, waste. Yard, okay, yard waste, yard waste. trim, and pallet. Okay. And there and there may not. I just in case there was, I threw that in there. But, okay. Um, I think that my note said the, the trim, which I was more wondering where that came from. But um, but uh, I did prepare the uh, order of conditions, and I sent it out to the commission, and uh, and uh, I didn't get any comments back on it. But I think that everything that you're looking for is is in it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I have read it today. Right, so at that point, I guess we're looking for a motion. If someone would like to make a motion, do we close this last time? Make a motion. Uh, close. You could probably start by where is it on the agenda? Close. No, it needs to be closed close. and okay. and uh, issued. Can't issue. Do I make here a motion to close? 
motion to close NOI 270-071228 Intervale Terrace, map 26, lot 217, ring. Second. All those in favor? Make a motion to issue, uh, issue order conditions NOI 270-071228 Intervale Terrace, map 26, lot 217, ring. Second. All those in favor? inspection prior to it starting, but uh, you're okay to, um, you know, continue on with your building permit or, you know, plan the process at this point. There's a 10-day okay. appeal period, but I'm sure by the time that building permits are issued, that should be fine. Uh, 10 days from tomorrow, right? And, and uh, it's 10 business days. Okay. From when it's filed. Yeah. Right. And I'll sign it tomorrow, so 10 days from tomorrow. Okay. Would you like to pick it up, or do you want me to send it out to you, sir, by the mail? Um, i pick it up the time. Anytime before two. Anytime tomorrow, two. and then on Monday through Thursday, anytime between 8 and 5 30. Okay. And on Tuesday, we're here until Sunday. Okay. All right. Thank you for listening. will be in the drop up. Uh, there's like a pickup then, so if I'm not there, just ask anyone that you would be looking for something to pick up then. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda is notice of intent 270 dash. I don't believe we have a DEP number yet, but 44 Roman Lane, Matt 50, Lot 36, Carol. And um, before we start, I have to read my spiel. So this is a public hearing. Um, it's now open and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. Hearings conducted in the following manner. Applicant presents the proposal. Commission receives reports from the administrative tech advisors and other town departments. Commission will address questions and comments to the applicant, and then public will be given the opportunity to ask questions. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce the members of the commission, starting on my right. Bob Hayes. David Pinnett. Anika Scanlon, Vice Chair. Rebecca Long, with you. Michael Flynn. Chuck Tarani, Conservation Administrator. Good evening, Madam Chair. My name is Jim McGrail, representing the Carrolls, uh, Matt and Susie. Uh, they're the owners of the property at 44 Illinois. Would you like to keep going? Sure. Okay. So th there's a long history here, as I think most of us are aware. We did talk about this, I think, in the formal session in um, November, I believe, time frame. Um, the, just for a brief history, uh, approximately six years ago, the uh, Carrolls had a uh, Oxbow come in and do a wetland delineation um, that they relied on um, to uh, proceed with their project. At that particular time, um, the board uh, rejected, for lack of a better term, rejected that delineation. Uh, the Carrolls appealed to DEP. Uh, DEP sided with the Carrolls, uh, but they didn't um, protect their appeal rights in time. Um, so as a result, um, you know, there was some back and forth between the commission and the Carrolls relative to why not the Oxbow line, um, you know, why the town thought the line didn't work. And, and as we thought, there was a lot of back and forth. Um, I got involved, um, and the whole idea was to start fresh, to start a new, to, to just back up. Um, and for the purpose of that, we submitted a new application, a new notice of intent. Um, I worked off of our meeting in the formal session that we had uh, back in um, November. I, since that time, uh, Chuck and I have had a couple of conversations in the phone. We've also met 
uh, in person a couple of times to try to um, you know come to a meeting of the minds with the commission. We use the Oxbow line for the purposes of the application, but we, we also know that there's going to be hopefully some give and take as a matter of this application. Uh, the Carols are aware of that. Chuck and I have had some discussions. Um, so for the purposes right now, just to start, I mean, what we have in your application is um, the Oxbow line with what the Carols um, were hoping to do um, as a complete project. Um, based upon um, the discussions, again, what we had informally and I had with Chuck, it sounds like to me that the area behind the house where the pool is shown is not necessarily a problem area. Um, but the concern that the commission had, if you were looking at the property, was on the left side of the property, in that area that is um, a yard. Um, and it's more to the rear of the property as opposed to the front of the property. So our goal here was to get some feedback from you and potentially discuss some potential solutions with you that would be amenable to both you, the commission, and the Carrolls as the property owners um, in this particular instance. All right, okay, where do we start? We did yeah. a second. We had a site visit, and um, um, it looks like um, when I look at the conceptual design on this, um, and we walked down here, um, this area has actually started to grow back in with like scrubby, shrubby um, vegetation all throughout. But are you planning to do any filling beyond this? Um, I think this is a retaining wall. In through here. Can I, can I, yeah. In through can here. Do you have the other one? Can you put that on the line of wood? If you just kind of describe it. Yeah. Is that work here? Is that upside down? That seems like oh, that's no, 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 that no. works. That's correct. Okay. That works for me. You, yeah. you can draw on it if you want. So <clears throat> this was our original uh, rendering that we had uh, proposed uh, before Jim and Chuck, uh, you had uh, spoken um, back in November. Uh, since then, uh, we had uh, created another rendering that was uh, toned down from this. I don't know if you have that PDF. I didn't have that. <laughs> so the commission doesn't know about that. So I, so by all means, put that in front of them and tell them that's exactly what we're we now. Uh, well, regardless, they're all the same cost. Okay. So, <clears throat> So this was our original rendering um, that, that we had proposed. Uh, Jim and um, Chuck had um, discussed kind of offline um, the, the, the possible ways to kind of come up with a, a solution um, that would be a little bit uh, less aggressive than what we had right here. Um, the guys, I uh, guess, current state that we had um, for back of a lot of terms is that we. Um, uh, coming off this uh, the side uh, side right here, uh, we'd be looking to use this as a work area, more or less, uh, from here on uh, here on in. So, <clears throat> to the left of this red line, um, we are proposing that we would leave um, the existing state uh, along this red line. Uh, utilizing um, existing boulders on the property um, and then whatever other boulders that we can um, uh, get with our uh, contractor that we'll end up using uh, to create a retaining wall um, in the lawn here and then this area would be filled in uh, naturally grading towards the backyard there is a differential uh, between the street and the existing backyard and somewhere in between is, uh, is where we'd end up uh, towards the backyard meaning that uh, that current uh, grade. So, so Matt, it kind of when we're out there, kind of, <coughs> kind of starts up in here and then it goes down like this. Yes. So yeah. you're gonna you're gonna fill in some of this, but then you're gonna you're gonna feather this down to, to that, and then it's really steep right here. Yeah. So so it would it would definitely be steep. Um, uh, Going towards the, the to the back uh, backyard, uh, but the intent would be to bring this level that's up here um, up to essentially the um, you know, the current grade of the backyard again without 
Yeah, because the, the backyard's here, and the area that in question is down like this. So yeah. we are talking about bringing it up. So what are you going so to put here to, 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 are you going to put a wall? That's, that's the boulders he was talking about, using the boulders so to. So field stone, right? Yeah. Field, field stone. No mortar, <coughs> field stone, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Loose stone. Because I didn't get that from, we didn't get that from this no, plan. So I, no, I yeah. thought that you started that. that. That plan is just to be used as the baseline, and just to get an application and have a baseline, and then work you with you like this collaboratively to come up with a solution. That, that was the plan. Didn't he just say that that was the original plan that you had back in November, and that you what we submitted this here, yeah, this. and that you wanted to be less aggressive in the plan? And what I see here is more aggressive. You're heading more towards the wetland area than less. So, by with that red line, sir. So, I, I, and and what I when we went out and did the site visit. You know, I was kind of amenable to this plan where you have the boulder line there with leaving the rest of it untouched and filling where the boulder line is up from there because we're still, you know, looking as, as to where that, if you look at even the, the line that's the 25 and 35 no structure zone that your, your red line that you have there actually crosses and is impinging in, inside that. So, <coughs> I see this red line that you hear, have here as more aggressive than the plan that we have here, the one that's showing on the, on the screen. I guess I didn't, Dave, I didn't understand if that was going to be left naturally or filled in. That was, right. my, that was my question. I, I thought that looking at this plan, not the red line, the plan that's there, I thought everything that, as we're looking here, to the left of that boulder line was going to be left in its natural state. And it would be, yes. No. No, no. no. What are you saying is the boulder line? He's talking about the retaining wall. The boulder wall. line is... He's talking about... Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's, that's oh, what he's talking no, about. No. So this is the, the this boulder line is for the purposes of... This was... What he, which yeah. His proposal right now is submitted was to all that was to do all this to, so which is what can you yeah. elaborate on yes. what all this is is it filling so, and so there's a wall what's the, going along sure. what's what is yeah. that sure so there is not a wall today yeah Correct. right right along right here. yeah there are six to seven existing yeah. boulders yeah. right, right. Did see those. right this right here is just for the render uh, rendering uh, right here um, so again what we'd be proposing would be to the left of this line right here would be left existing um, natural on, uh, natural thank you I, again I know that this rendering of what you are looking at right here isn't what I'm saying right now but again in lieu of what Jim and Chuck were speaking of last month um, this is what we have tried to kind of come back with um, to kind of soften it going out into this area knowing that when we were out there in May and June of 2017 that that was a point of contention in that area. I guess, I guess, Dave, I, I would ask you, um, when we were out there and I was, I was walking on this side of their red line in the back, right. I didn't think that was wetland, but when, we, when you go down... Right. <laughs> and, to the left of that. Yeah, and yeah. Anika did some snooping and found a line from the... Uh, a 93? Uh, 93 from 34 Roma. Yep. Um, it, there was a, a line that actually went into 44 Roma, and and we always, and I, I can see wetland vegetation down there in that corner, so I think. You're you know, talking about yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, basically, I guess to, to, to make this look like what you're talking about, take all the shrubs and boulders to the left and run them right up to the red line, so to speak, whatever that natural state is. Yeah. And then on that red line, you're you're suggesting that you want to put some kind of a barrier, retainer, fillstone, no boulders. Any, the lawn. Whatever yeah. boulders. Fillstone, boulders, lawn. Everything to the to the right of the red line would be lawn. Yeah, so Bob, take, yeah. taking this area right in here essentially would be hugging this line right here. Everything to the left of you lead along. Correct, yes. Yeah. And 
this area, uh, like I mentioned, starting at the street and feathering towards the backyard, reaching this current uh, level of the backyard, which is about a two to two and a half foot differential between this area and this current area right here would be filled in and then we'd be seeding into my lawn. Yeah, so having this in mind, maybe we can look at the site just because there's contours on that it might mm. help give a, a better idea if we can okay. draw the lines. And... All right, so I'm just going to switch to the flag plan. Can you see that? Yeah. Oh, we have to erase that. Just, well, just don't erase the line. <laughs> rotate. <laughs> Rotate that around, Chuck, so yeah. it's the same it's direction. Here. Sure. Yeah. Hey. Oof. Well, not, I'm not sure if that's correct. I mean, it yeah. seems I, generally correct because it says woods at the dog. No, it says house. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I think this is no, no, a little far, did. right? Guys, so, guys. Yeah, it's this, 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 these are different scales, right. so yeah. I, that isn't right. So this actually might might help. Um, yeah, we had a different color. This is the this is the current tree line uh, right here, uh, which is that. So really, um, again, understand that there aren't different scales. Yeah, yeah. Um, this this is kind of what we're thinking about of coming up here. Um, again, so we'd be kind of um, holding the tr same tree line uh, up until this point, and then when we're getting into the area in question towards the back, instead of going straight back, uh, we would uh, taper it off, um, coming more towards the current backyard. What are the, what are the, uh, <coughs> you have trees that are, uh, have orange ribbons tied around them? What are, what are the orange ribbons oh, yeah. indicating, or pink ribbons that are indicating on the trees that are in the backyard? So those weren't included um, in this, uh, this initial filing. Um, they were trees that we were potentially interested in uh, removing, um, but we knew we have a lot kind of um, on this application. So again, if it became a um, sticking point or point of contention, those would be concessions that we'd be looking to. Uh, You've got one of them that's beyond your stone wall. Why do you want to take that one down? And then the, there were, there were, um, go back up. Yeah, there's actually several on the other side. There, there was, there was a, Dave, there was the double one here. Double one there and a single one. Good. No, no, it was on this side. Uh, yeah, there was a double one here, double one here, a double, and a double. No, and, and then there was, a, a there, was a, there was a really nice one, big fat one, next to it, remember? Yeah. Yeah, you can Next see to the it double. The, the, the double one on the left hand side had a lot of uh, bark that was like split open. Mm -hmm. It didn't look healthy, but there was a bigger one that looked very healthy right there. That looked healthy. I didn't even take a look at those. So, again, not deviating because, again, we didn't include this, so not deviating too far off. But the trees that we did have are in off. Those that again um, we we had interest in possibly re removing again if some of that dead wood or some of those leaders that are leaning more towards a hood uh, towards a, the house uh, could be considered to be at least uh, trimmed um, that would work for us as well. So the, the challenge will always be if there's some particularly like two feet of filling. Any any tree inside that's essentially going to be a goner anyways, oh, I, right? I got a question for you. Is it where's your property line? Property line, as uh, Chuck said, the woods along there, and then this is property property line. So there's a uh, there's an electrical box uh, right here at the corner yeah. of our property where it uh, juts out. Where's your property li line in the back? Uh, the stone wall uh, right here. Why are you going in somebody else's property to cut down the trees? Well, when they on the other not, I've asked them, and they had no problem with me taking them down, and they had no problem oh, with me. Oh, oh, oh. They're not, yeah, exactly, they're, yeah. Sorry, but that's not oh. their property. I, I thought you were talking about trees on the left of the red line. Yeah. Talk about the yeah. blue, the tree, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the trees are back. The trees yeah, are the he said okay. he has permission from the property owner to take them down. Yeah. Okay. So just asking. Maybe, uh, yeah. That's what I was confused about. <laughs> I thought the property line right was a stone wall. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. yeah. But again, this wasn't. But that's not that's part not of this application. Right. Yeah. Okay. But I understand why it has. Why isn't it? Yeah. I don't know why. Why wouldn't you put this in the set? Why would you include everything? Because you'd have to come. 
back to yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. You know how much you like to. <laughs> I hope like well, because I think because this, this is our area of focus um, up right here. And again, with the history and the convoluted um, path that we've been we trying to on, keep it apples to apples. Um, we're trying to keep it a simple. Uh, the the simple. original application was about this, wasn't about those kids. So we try to keep it the same as it, it's been. It's been. That, that's what we do. Did you? Do you? Uh, did everyone look at the trees enough to know if? No, I. We just Dave and I looked, and, and Nico. I looked, looked at the ones that were straight away. Yeah, um, the ones right, right on, on the, your property. To the left, yeah. left of the house, the left edge of the house. If you follow that back to where that clump of rocks is there, um, there's a, a fairly probably a 14 inch oak that's there. That's right on the stone wall. That. that Right very at the healthy edge tree. Of the existing lawn. Um, you know, and, and, the, the, and, and the the that pets. double leader that's there, one half of it is is yeah. fairly dead, the other one is yeah. leaning toward what would be towards the pool. I mean I, I wouldn't have any trouble taking that down, but the rest of the trees are look to be pretty healthy trees to me. Yeah, so so, so again if if you know they could just the dead wood can be removed or the yeah. leaders in question to be removed. Yeah. Um, <coughs> It's actually too bad I, I was home at the time. I wish you should, should folks were out there. I probably would have helped a lot just now. But. The question that I have is to, because I was, I was under the impression that this is what you were desiring to do. And so I, I guess the this red line is just kind of coming out of left field to I me. don't think you're understanding what was proposed in that plan. What I, plan? There was a lot more filling on the plan that you're looking at. This one? Yes. That's it was vague. Heard. It wasn't explicitly stated. That's why there's I not, asked what there's you not much show in I know, here but that's that what they've indicated tonight is right. that. Right. It's, it's, it's now it's gone. Well, that's why. The, yeah. the proposal just said the, uh, the it, it said Filling. that there was grading, landscaping, and providing a retaining wall at the left side of the property, planting that, that planting native plants in the undeveloped areas. Yep. So also seeking to install an in-ground pool. So when I see this, this is what I was going by when we did our site visit. And I also was going by the, the adjacent property as to where the wetland delineation was in the adjacent property and where that crosses into your property. And it's not, not near where this, this wetland line is. And I know that this wetland line, you know, was that's been part of the contentious bit of this right straight along. So, you know, where, where you weren't going way over there where that was always kind of a contentious point. I really didn't look at the rest of it. So, and, and you really don't have any, any delineation as to where that, that this red line is on something like this. It, that's, it, it is, and it's not on. Yeah, it's not, so it's, it's because wanted in part of this, this as much as this is a public hearing and the, at the start of the initial application process we wanted you know we knew there was going to be a compromise hopefully we knew there was going to be a compromise solution that came out of this and we didn't want to go spend you know keep spending money so we wanted to get some feedback from the commission as to what was plausible, what wasn't plausible, what didn't work, knowing full well that we're going to have to come back to you at some time with a more formal, updated plan that's less um, intensive than what you're currently being provided. Um, so, so let's think about let's 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 put this into little blocks of development. Um, what does the commission feel? <coughs> about uh, the pool in the back of the house to the set. Oh. And just, just to add to it, the, the pool meets the standards Super. by the Conservation right. Commission with the flags. So it's 35 feet away. Yep. So I don't, I don't know what the size of the pool is, but for us it's fine and there's plenty of vegetation. So he's yeah. yeah. kind of creating vegetation there. I don't think you're doing major grading there. You're kind of working with the, the, the level that's there. The so it's just kind of plant a pool and plant some plants in that area. So uh, I, don't, I don't see a technical obstacle to the pool and the vegetation surrounding it. Great. Um, I, I myself don't even see um, much of an issue with um, if um, we took that sort of 
you know, that line that comes out perpendicular to your stone wall in the back just to the left of the house, sort of what we've been calling the border wall. Yep. I don't see much of an issue even with kind of making that the edge of your filled lawn area. Um, and that's the extent that sort of the edge of that area is, is the extent. Um, and and that's those are the things that I I think I in good conscience knowing the variety of wetland lines that have been out there could um, see justifying permitting. I think the rest of it um, starts to get a little bit more dicey because um, because of the history of a variety of lines. Um, on the property and next door um, and because of observations we've made about saturated conditions in the backyard there and because of um, vegetation that's present back there um, so I think the further we go to the left and the further we go to the left and to the back um, the harder it gets, in my eyes, to justify fill and cutting. May I ask a question just so I'm clear sure. on what you're saying? Sure. You, so you're saying that you, what you just said was that you think this should be the end of our yard, of our grass. This should not be grass? No. At the end of fill. Not supporting the any of, fill the end beyond of fill. this line. So she's because saying, it's technically it's illegal to fill wetlands. So, and, gotcha. you know, because that is actually a violation of the Wetlands Protection Act, is filling of wetlands. I understand, so but I, I do want to interject yeah, so here. I'm sorry, but okay. some of this is not wetland that, that I, you are I, saying is wetland. Um, and, and, that's, and that's the crux of the matter. Well, you could see where the high bush blueberries and the, and the sensitive fern were, and they were really, and you have some corroboration from next door, and it, there was a line that came in like this, okay? A line of what? A wetland, of a wetland, wetland, wetland from line. the 93, from the next 93, door. Yeah. Uh, um, you might. I, I just, this to me, did not appear to be wetland. He, and, but, and when you say, yeah, that when the guy from DEP, Mike Abel, did those things, he was really over in in that area. And there were other areas, but but it, there's a hummocking stuff going on Be between I mean, the hummocking the, and then literally putting it, putting whatever those locations are on the plan, so so, so that you can sort of set up the setbacks after well, that. Are you going to say something or not? Nope. I'm just <laughs> waiting. I'm being polite. This is a new show. This is a new show. 2.0. 2.0. 2.0. May I? Please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think... <laughs> what color are you using, Chuck? I'm going to use, I'm going to use red, but I'm going, to, I'm going to ask you guys. So the one thing that I, I'm... I think we should do is we should just at least meet the 25 foot and then head over here. I think that's kind of an important and there's there's been multiple lines in that area and so I'd like to keep the 25 foot. Personally, I don't, I mean, so this is just like, this is clear. We can't defend this area. We got nothing out here. I think there's a lot of people on the commission that's going to say the further we go to um, uh, Roma Lane, Roma Lane. Roma Lane. Um, we can't defend. So, but we're getting stuff there. We're getting habitat. We're getting uh, shading. We're getting you know old growth trees. He's extending this. I don't know what's out there. I did look at the aerial. There's a lot of trees out here. I know there's some trees here, one or two, that are big. Or, but this plan saves a lot of big trees that that are there too. So I don't, I don't think we're at a point where we're saying, um, what else can we get? This has been a hard fought road, and Chuck. You know, if we if we said, look, let's let's go into this area here and eliminate that, and then you know we're, we're touching there and we're eliminating that. 
you know, maybe maybe that's fair, but and the last point I'm going to make is that when we're talking about the line, in my mind, we had three holes in the ground. I only felt comfortable with the first two. As we got further away, that third hole closest to Roma Lane, that that wasn't something that I thought we were going to get. And that was kind of in this area here. Yep, I agree. So we're going back, keeping the 25-foot line, and they're, they're creating a, a lawn area. I guess, and they're giving back yeah. all this. I, really thought that we would be talking about how can we protect that barrier in the future. Can we go back to the site plan? Sure. <laughs> can I ask, I can I ask a question you, for, to the Carols? Just, just throwing this out here, and if you uh, just follow me along and, and, and follow with what Chuck has kind of drawn and, 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 and just bent your red line there just a little bit of keeping with the, the boulder line you have there. If you follow that boulder line out to the edge of your driveway, you already have kind of a line of boulders there now. To actually take that, that boulder line somewhere there within a couple of feet and, and fill that to give you the uh, somewhat of a level yard around your pool, etc., and then drop down and then just skim fill the rest of that area that is demarcated with that red line and make that a lower lawn. So we have four small children who um, during this whole process have gotten bigger and bigger. Yep. Um, and um, one of the main problems that they run into is that our driveway is right there. They play basketball and my son has to run goes down that hill through the thorns to try to find his basketball if you were at my house you probably saw we have a net there yeah, to yeah. try to keep the basketballs um, that's my main concern is that you know we've got two boys two girls the, the boys are playing basketball out there and we were trying to get them a yard that was as close to you know level that graded down to match the backyard um, that you know that, that was why we didn't consider it two tier. I mean, and the other thing too is, you know, our girls are riding their bikes. Our smallest one is five now. And um, when kids are riding bikes down here, it's a huge drop off. And it makes me concerned that kids are gonna fall into the ditch. I call it the ditch, to be honest with you. Um, so that's where- Does that ditch ever fill up with water? Does it fill up with water? No. So are you, are you advancing that you want to fill that area that's right up adjacent to your driveway level with the, up to the sidewalk? Height? So definitely hear what you're saying. I, I think it would start a uh, decline right from that point. So it would never be, there would never be, um, you know, kind of a spot where this would be necessarily flat uh, per se. Um, but I think it would, it was basically starting here, start that, uh, downward gradient to start matching. Yeah, so matching it around. Yeah. So, so that's kind of like, and, and something that, in line with what you're talking about, Chuck, something that I, I feel like I could get in with, and, and, see, and I, I can play with this a little bit more. But so, Chuck, you're talking about tying in a little bit to the 25 foot. You know, I don't know if, if you're going to fill here, these trees are, are going right. And, and we, if you're going to fill, the trees aren't going to make it. Um, so those should be part of the application. The only thing that you can potentially do is if, if you tugged it around. But the thing that I see is, A, you know, some of the trees in this area where maybe they're outside of the tree line or the, and, and this 91 contour that has always kind of, I, I don't know, I, I've, I've, in line with what you're saying, I see something like this as, you're trying to get this area all to, I think this contour is 394 or something, what's the? 94. You're trying to get all of this to match the 90, this 94 contour. Right, and that so this is essentially like three foot of fill in this, two and a half, three foot of fill in this area. And just like I said, you're something, something to, so this is as soft, exactly. soft, soft, exactly. soft, exactly. soft. Yeah. Um, 
again, it's, a, and it's an area closest to the house, the area that receives the most activity, the most light, um, and the most disturbance based on ex what's existing now. Well, and what I like about this, to be honest as well, is so right now, you, 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 this, uh, this is uh, an area, no matter what mm -hmm. you do, something, things are occurring. Is that it's a, a, a rock wall, some, it, it's essentially a delineator. Yeah, it's, it's exactly providing more protection to this area it, anyway. Yeah, and what we had hoped that this line would represent um, is that field stone, boulder, yeah. rock wall that would serve as a, as a purpose um, so that we can uh, fill in to create the grass area, uh, but more importantly, essentially define our work area where everything to the left of this would be left undisturbed and natural in its current state. Anika came up with a suggestion. Uh, we'd ask. Switch back to the other plan. No, just leave it. We just wondered if you would be amenable to staking that line out in the field so that we could take another look at that. One hundred percent, and if, even if we got to a point where we came to a, an agreement, we were that line um, yeah. prior to the work. Um, we were planning on using Bill Labriola of uh, Labs and Landscaping out of uh, Wakefield. And what I spoke to him about before, before any major work had done, if he had the, um, the, the boulders on site, to just uh, drop those boulders down to represent where our current um, current work area would be. And if we wanted something pulled in closer or something pulled away, at least it would be at that point before something was completed. But to your, to your point, I'm more than happy to throw a few stakes down and throw a few ribbons um, around it to kind of Better kind of, uh, yeah, I think before, before you do the boulder yeah. work. <clears throat> I put the ribbons in the stakes in before the yeah. boulders. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. It wasn't was a permanent. Yeah. Put the boulders in from a permanent. I'm just going to show you the, the cart before the work. But still, you can do, yeah. but do the work with stakes. Yeah. That's yes. or do you have a uh, proposal <laughs> uh, for that red line there? Um, you know, keeping it as it, as about where it comes across the stone wall there, it, close to the 25 foot line that is existing on here now, um, and then that line that you have, the the line that's drawn right there. Do you have um, a contour height that you would uh, that you are proposing to fill to, uh, predicated on on this on this plan? So this uh, this plan is predicated on that right, one, yes. uh, right there. Clearly can't uh, see that. Right. However, I do have a black and white that does have the, um, uh, the topography you, you, on there. Your backyard goes from 99 to 93. Stick, stick, with, stick with this. Uh, so if you go back to that other plan, what, no, I, stay, what no, I see here. No, keep that plan that stay up. Is, yeah, but yeah. just is there's a, a wall and steps right here. So the 99, they're, they're cutting down yep. in this area. So the 94 that I see, go ahead, but just so you yep. can kind of see that. That 99 is, is high relative to what they're right. proposing to do. So what are they meeting, the 93? I think they're meeting about the 94. It, so if you think they're meeting the 94, okay. This is, this is the 94. What I wrote on right here is the 94 contour. This is 94 right here. Because so, the thing is, is that you one keep them with what you were saying about the, the kids 24, and the bikes right? and the basketball. Because even if you follow the 94 one line, yeah. you're still five feet it's downgrading it from your yeah. driveway yeah, exactly. to where you'd be filling to in the backyard here. Which is, is still a fairly considerable drop that's in the yard so, so I just wanted to make certain that you were aware of that so that after this thing is all said and done you don't say this isn't what I thought it was going to be that's why I was wondering what you th thought the gradient line was going to be as far as the fill predicated on what the gradient of your driveway currently is the kids playing basketball and the kids riding the bikes etc because it's still going to be yeah, I see, what, I see what you're saying here. So the you driveway know, is at 99. Right. Oh, we, and if backyard, you fill it to 94. The backyard's at 94. You're still, you're still, yeah, you're right. still going to have a toboggan ride down that slope. <laughs> right. So, I mean, if we're at 99 right here, 
you know, I, I would imagine there would be a precipitous drop right there right. reaching that, that 94. So there wouldn't be a drop off to 94 at, at this point. Right. So, so I, that's it, why I was so just kind of wondering what your what your target target um, um, gradient line was. Okay. So I guess our gradient line would be 99 here at this point. If you want to close the level of the driveway, it would be. Right. That means you're going to have to put a rather large retaining wall back. Yeah, right. that's not a, uh, a really a rock wall. Because you, you, that's you're talking about... That's engineer's wall, probably right. over six feet with a permit. Because you, you, you're basically between mm -hmm. the edge of the woods, that's at 90, and your driveway's at 99, so you're nine feet gradient difference. There. Well, he, he's not looking for a perfectly so. flat lawn. He's going to he's going to grade it down towards the back and towards but the side. So when he meets the side, no. hopefully he, he's at that fieldstone retaining wall that he wants to use. I mean, that's something that you can work out. Again, they're here to, to just try to figure out where they can work and where they can't work, and then they I, I heard them say that they'll come back with plans that are more definitive what what the final product is and take into consideration things we've asked so i don't have a problem with the squiggly red line if you want to call it that but i would like to see it in real space i would out too of the site. yeah but that's a good because idea. we're sketching yeah. it on the plan yeah. um, and that's all well and good but the plan is a proposed change from what's existing and I just want to see it in real space because I'm. And that was our expectation that. all along that that's what would come. We didn't ex obviously didn't expect market and say approved. Um, yeah. We thought that would be what we're doing right now. A little give and take. We would probably warrant a site visit and do exactly what you're doing. So we're prepared. We were prepared for that, and that's why we didn't have more expensive fans. plans because rather than go down that process, spend that money. We'd rather work with yeah, you to try to come up with yeah. yeah. better process. And, and I think I think we put you know take out where, where you think or flag where you think it's going to be. We'll, we'll I think we'll come out plan it where where you guys are available to, to kind of sit there and look at it with us, and that way we can all just out there decide if this is what makes sense. That sounds because to Mike's point that he was saying about the when we were out there for the site visit, it indicates a six inch maple here. That six inch maple is a is a, a, a dual trunk tree and then there's a 20 inch oak that's just behind it um, that is pretty close to where the 25 foot setback line is yeah so, so, I, if you so keep I think I think based on this dialogue tonight we can stake out our current um, uh, current proposed uh, uh, wish for a work area, mm -hmm. yeah. and then uh, we re-identify the trees that the trees are uh, that we'd like to uh, be pruned or potentially removed, yep. um, and then probably take away a lot of the noise that uh, some of those uh, flag trees were where they were uh, when you were there when you say this, okay. and not on this initial um, application. <laughs> and if labs needs boulders, he knows my yard is full. Uh, it off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stan, can you just, uh, so you said you'll remove some of the noise, uh, some of the black trees. Do you mean you're going to take some of the flags off some of the trees that you're going to have to Visit that's yeah. flagged. Um, we'll show you what we'd like to have pruned, or yep. if there's a okay. tree that's flagged, that would be a tree that would be looking to be removed. Yep. Okay. Okay, one. And, and any, again, I know there were a lot flagged up there. A lot of those re really are inconsequential to us, so we can kind of wipe that off and kind of quell those uh, concerns as well. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, one last, well, I have a la last question, but I'm not sure anyone has any other the last questions? question yet. But um, I was just wondering, and it didn't come up, but this area here. Um, <laughs> So in the give and take, so now we're talking about this side. And whatever part of this you want. Are you willing to leave that natural in perpetuity as part of the project? Mm, I wouldn't want it baked into our order conditions, but yes, that is our intention. That's this delineation of a work order for the intent of this application would be our we don't have I, I guess we don't have any intentions of going beyond there in, in the future. But again, we we're, we're probably gonna be better in the backyard. <laughs> but in the event that we want to move, um, you know, I, I wouldn't want to necessarily the property tied to something in writing. 
If you're going to start burying people in your backyard, you need a whole different permit. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, Jim, do you have a, a suggestion? Because I'm going to just throw it back to the commission and say the offer is at this point not to uh, develop the land beyond the red line. But maybe you want to say that differently. So, they, I mean, we talked about maybe calling it something different, but we usually have a you know, an area, an untouchable area, a natural zone, something like that, that, that we know that if we're giving up some of the more important areas, they can be created somewhere else. Um, so there's that give and take going on. So I don't know if anyone wants to chime in, but, you know, this is not, from what I'm hearing, this is not forever. This the next property owner could bring this all up again. It's not ex pushing that line back. Cool. Well, he had to put the other way. Just, yeah, just, yeah. just put it out there. It's fine. It's fine. But that's certainly not something that they can protect against if somebody else buys the house and wants to do something else. If, if they approach the commission and say, well, if we, if we, so like over at Reading Woods, where they had that hundred foot line around the well and it's already was whatever. Yes, um, it is Reading Woods. Yeah, Reading Woods. Yeah. That was well beyond our usual 25-foot zone of natural vegetation, but it was just called the natural zone, and it was protected. So no one's going to go in Does there. Does that go going. forward with a deed? Well, if it's on the order of conditions, the reason why it's... So then 10 years from now when no one's here and someone else who bought the house looks at it, they'll read the order, which you would always do with a new project. You would just look back in the file and say this happened, and they would understand that this area was supposed to be protected for this other work. Um, if, it, if it's not, then you know you could get that creeping going on over a, a lot of time. Maybe, maybe if it's not the whole area, like I said, as we get towards Roma, it's harder to defend, but maybe something in the back. Just, just throwing it out there. You guys need to think about it. What, because what, about, what about asking to have anything that's inside in that area there that's inside the 100-foot buffer zone? So that would still leave 30 feet, 40 feet from Roma Lane into the property at the very edge that would not be within the conservation restriction. Sure, based on the, the line on the other uh, plane. He, he right. So, you know, that would be, it's, it's somewhere up, it's, it's a line that's pretty close to the front of the garage. I, well, I guess I would be hesitant to particularly use the term like conservation restriction. That's, that's a very official it's hard and fast. line. Yep. I guess I, I would, would want to see something in our order of conditions that indicated that as part of this project, we did not want to see that area, not necessarily, but part of getting this project approved was that there was going to be this field stone wall and the, the area to the left or east or whatever direction it is was going to remain untouched. And, and it is up to the, a, a future commission, if some future owner came, right. okay. to sit there and say, no, that's part for this pool and all that work to get done. You had to keep have that there, and that should remain there. Or they they can look at it and say, you know what, that was what that that commission did back then, but we're doing it differently now. And, and at least have them have the ability to make the decision. Okay. But have the wording in there that it's clear that it's part of this project. All right. So on on your plan, we would need something that again a name. You can call it something, so I can say I can identify it in the order of conditions. And if you tell me how many square feet is out there in that area. We should be fine. Great. Or uh, if, if you guys don't name it, I will. But I've used my name so many times. To, as a really bad animal. So <laughs> the truck, the truck, yeah, yeah, the truck. Oh, yeah. It's fine with me. It's it's we're we're gonna, gonna have brain of blocks. We're gonna have brain of blocks. Let's say that. Give it a tally. Call it Tyrone. Yeah. The Tyrone zone. I just, I just have one other question. So we're in the Aquifer Protection District with increased impervious of the pool we're not we're not coming close to that's that's going to be looked at limits, by sorry. the building department we can look at it too sorry. but so the, the regulations have changed so as I understand it, it's 15,000 square feet or 
if I get this right, it's down. Yeah, I shouldn't even say because I don't think I have it. It's like fifteen or twenty five hundred square feet. Fifteen percent or twenty five hundred feet of your of your lot, and anything over that, you only now need to infiltrate the difference. So what they're looking at is if they've overcome that threshold, they need to do some infiltration. Okay. And that's between engineering Correct. and uh, building departments. So and if you had to, and as this thing develops, and out, if you had yeah, to, like because you're filling so much in there, it'd be nothing to put a infiltration chamber in there to take some of the leaves off your house. Yeah, percent, of the, percent of the total lot square footage. Yeah, it's a, it's 15 percent or 2,500 square feet, whichever is greater. So if it's an acre, they about 9,000 square feet they can play with. And, um, and there's certain things that aren't counted. So it's, again, that's the limit of my knowledge on it. It's really a building engineering uh, question. So, but we can we can have that, you know, known. Well, I, mean, I think they'd only end up having to reduce some stuff, but uh, before we sign the order of conditions, if if we got that far, yeah. that so we could we could get the answer to that. It's less than that. So, so wait, you, it's fifty percent or what? Fifteen percent of forty-four thousand. I said nine billion. Now they're quoting you on the numbers. Twenty thousand square foot. Did you just look at it? No, no. Oh, it's on uh, zoning. Some you guys have some questions for us. Twenty thousand square foot. Well, so when? We do the site visit on yeah. the Tuesday well, so and Friday. The builder's lot is considered 40,000 after that's 20, so we're doing the 20, but the acre's 44 and change, right? Yeah, 44,000. 44,000, 287 feet. There's no, uh, that's Martin Luther King week, right? Or Monday's Martin Luther King. There's no, that's not going to mess up your schedule, right? For the site visit. No, because no, it's, it's Tuesday. 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 What time are you doing? Usually 9.30. 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 Usually 9.
I can be at the site visit on the 22nd. I mean, if you, if you lay something out that they, the commission goes to and says two thumbs up, then we can just move this way. But if not, yeah, you might. You know what I'm saying? What do you think? Is that what you were thinking? Yeah. I was just thinking of, <laughs> instead of extending it out another month, because probably on the 23rd, we probably won't uh, get to a determination on, on the 23rd based on the 22nd site visit. So at least get the 22nd site visit for you folks to see what mm -hmm. we're proposing for a work area. But at least just keep moving us along rather than pushing it up to the farm to the, to the 13th. So do you mean a decision on if, if this is acceptable in some form of that? Because we won't be making an official decision until you lock everything down Correct. with some standard. Correct, but, but I guess if you folks came out on the 22nd, viewed where we had staked out, and then you could say directionally, yeah, Matt and Susie, you're heading in the right direction, maybe you can come up with something a little bit more formal yeah. for us to look at on the, on the 13th, then we can have those discussions. We can do that with or without you. Just number the stakes, and if we have an issue, we'll say, we wanted stake seven, moved up three feet, back, whatever. So if you put numbers on the stakes, right, I'll do the same thing trees as well. That helps. Yeah. 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 We do yeah. all that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is your time frame? I'm just curious. Are you trying to get this done before the summer? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was regardless of how long it's taken to get this far, but assuming we're making progress, is it? Is that well, I mean, it's been six and a half years, so, you know, we've been patient. But who's, who's coming? <laughs> but, the, yeah, but the understanding would be if some at some point uh, during this winter, Mother Nature's going to come along at some point while they're not allowing and inhibiting any work to be done to her, that hopefully by uh, the weather break in the springtime, we'd be able to hit the ground running and I, I think it's a good idea because by the time we get to February 8th, we could have five feet of snow sitting on that area that we're trying to make well, a line. The year we got yeah. 10 feet in February, we yeah. got not just like this year, <laughs> right after February. Yeah. So I, I think it, you know, the, the sooner that's the better. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking is on the 12th, yeah. there might be two feet of snow up there, and you, you folks probably wouldn't be too comfortable with it. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think the, sort of the, the, from that standpoint. Uh, just for this line that's here, are you planning on having that uh, stone wall that you're going to build there to fill against? Is that going to be level, or is that going to undulate? It's going to—is it going to change in elevation? I would say that um, this wall from here to here will change in elevation oh, will. Uh, with the with the um, the slope and gradient slope. of the of the lawn. Um, as it reaches towards the back of the house. Okay. So you're going to have some kind of a, a wall at the end of the pool to make certain that that's level around the pool space? Um, I, I guess the expectation would be by the time we come around this bend that this would hopefully be just about the same gradient. Okay. Um, so there wouldn't necessarily need to be any more right. wall work or wall work. At that 94. Yeah. Yes, yes. Are you expecting six to people the right way. Yeah. work with an engineer uh, to get this grading and stone wall or use this all landscaping? To be quite honest and transparent, uh, we're hoping just landscaping and not okay. well, okay. engineer at this point. But we can get uh, topography uh, on the plane that you're going to submit. Yes, I think. Our hope would be that whatever we agree on, and I guess if we need to put actual topography and levels on there, that we would hopefully be close to that at the, at the final product. And, and if there is some, some deviation from that, hopefully. Well, the survey guy should probably be able to get all those numbers to work. So we can see, so he can, you'll just tell him what you want, and then he'll show us. And then we'll, we'll see, like that driveway area, we're only guessing at this point, but the survey person would tell us exactly what how much fill is in there because they'll have some proposed contour lines. And that, that's what we'd really need because we, we'd have to approve a plan with a final height of you know contours. And I guess as, as lay people, we're not very good visionaries. Um, our thought would be that um, our contractor were to get in there, they bring in dry axles of fill, bring it to a certain point of maybe close to our satisfaction, and we need to bring in additional from there to get it kind of where we would want our final grade to be. Yeah, so um, it, it, the best way to do it would be just to, for everyone to know it's going to be graded off to whatever contour line, even if it's 
slopes down and whatnot. It might be a little bit of a problem to, you know, to get someone out there. Again, the survey person is going to do that and they're going to develop it. Um, and what that would solve is at the end where, you know, where you're kind of kind of get that Kentucky windage thing where you just kind of like guess, if not guessing, but you know, it's up to you at that moment to say bring a little more in or, or bring it out a little bit. We would need to be a little bit more exact here for, and, and to have these things in advance because we're approving a plan on paper and it's up to you to reproduce that out in the field. So, and so that's what we need. So Matt, I, I, I don't know if we're talking and I, I don't know if we're all on the same page. I think, I think, are, I think we are now. Because I, because a landscaper is not going to be able typically to tell us where those con those new Correct. contour lines yeah. are. You either need an engineer or uh, yeah, a, survey. a survey. Survey. Yeah. Survey. Or a survey. Survey. Yeah. Yeah. And to go back to Chuck's original yeah. question, we weren't planning on using an engineer, and that was our original plan. But that that was insufficient for this application with everybody's comfort level of signing off on that. Then. Uh, unless you get into a wall, I think a survey. And if my gut, no, yeah, like if, if on some of the business, if uh, it's just filling. I mean, the, the survey would be able to do the contouring for you. If you're getting into uh, the wall is getting high, the engineers. Are He's going to be the, the, is, the sites being graded. Yeah. He's going to you know put out witness marks and you got to you know use those. Uh, and so the, the, the site guy will know what you're talking about, but but they'll be able to mark this thing so that they. Have you're also going to need it for the building inspector because you're going to need a building permit for the wall. For the wall? If it's over yeah. four feet. Yeah, if it's over. Over. That's going to be over four feet. But it's going to be, it, 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 it may down. not. It's yeah. going to be bold as we can. I don't think it is. Think so the expectation would be that we would not be over four, four feet, feet and that okay. working during the, the during the projects would be probably the contour would be dictating really what the, the eventual gradient would be. So if we needed to taper off onto the sides, like Chuck was mentioning, to kind of keep that wall well below there. Okay. Um, yeah. but what so and that's that, so and that's so that, that know, turning point of engineering. Yeah. Yeah. That right if there. you do taper it off, that will start to eat away at the actual surface area at a certain height. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So in order to build that slope in, that's safe and, and won't erode, that's the thing is, you know, um, one thing that would kind of maximize the amount of fill area at a certain height is a wall. Do you know what I'm saying? But if you don't want to go the wall route, you have to grade, and that will push the height closer to your house. A steeper slope. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. So that you have room laterally to build up a safe yeah. slope. So getting back to so the original to, point. That's the trade-off. You know, maybe, you know, maybe we do have to push this back where it does kind of dip, yeah. dip below and, and we do have a significant or you know, less than we, we, we do right here. And then it isn't as harsh of a, uh, you know, a drop to beat this area. So maybe we're somewhere in between <laughs> at a 96, 97 to reach a 94. And then we're not trying to make this I don't, I don't think you're going to reach it here, but we have a, a three to one yeah. declination too for any fill. So in other words, we have a maximum slope steepness, and that's three to one. Three to one. So for every so foot, every so three feet, you, go, you can't go yep. more than a foot. Yeah. I was just throwing out numbers. Was just just so you know, some of our slope restrictions that are written into our rigs. Just, just gauging, gauging the audience here. So um, we have a list of stakeout, the proposal, trees to be pruned, trees to be removed, and then a site visit on the 22nd. And I think we're going to see uh, Jim at that at that yep. meeting, and we'll just let him know where we're at, and then we'll go to the next meeting. We'll, Tell them at that meeting what, what we're looking for for the next meeting, and that might be a month out, but that might be just two weeks also. So probably quick meeting on the 23rd. Quick meeting on the 23rd, then a meeting on February 13th, is it? The next meeting is, yes, it's on the 13th. Right. That would be when you can come in with like the plans. And, and said, this is yeah, hopefully you would have plans at that point. And yeah, that's it. If all goes well with the stakeout, so to speak. Mm -hmm. yep. um, 
and the, between that time period and February 13th, we'll be able to produce plans to provide to the commission. Exactly. Okay. So it's, it's Tuesday, January 22nd at 9.30 for the site visit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get that in there. Just number those stakes, number the trees. Yep. And I'll, I can send it to Jim, I can send it to you, Chuck, uh, directly. Particular the trees, saying number one, prune, leader. Uh, Great. To re remove. And I'll send it to the commission. Great. Great. That'd be perfect. All right, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion continue. to continue. Second. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, folks. Have a good one. Yeah, here. All right. And it's at this point that we have Cross have. Street. Did we talk about Cross Street? We did a little bit. We didn't talk no. about it at the meeting. We could have kept on going. We got a half hour. <laughs> so I want to go next door for my team. <laughs> All right. We take care of cross street. Motion to adjourn. No, we can't. <laughs> have enough did, time. Is there a motion to adjourn? No. No, no motion. motion. Oh, it would, it would be. It would be. Kidding. It would kidding. just. No, it would just be. Uh, <laughs> what what, what were we talking about? Recess. Recess. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have enough. We don't have enough time. We'll determine how long it will be later. <laughs> so disappointed. <laughs> So the, yeah, I know. the cross street, Chuck, that's to amend order conditions to uh, change the grant bounds to rod or something buried in, in the lawn. Yeah, service. 56 cross street. The proposal is that uh, probably how we've done it in the past is to. It's not on our agenda. It's okay. three things that came up. This is to uh, have a granite bound visible foot or so above the ground at the property line. And then in between, since this is going to be converted into lawn or is lawn at this point, to any any granite brown um, would be a rebar stake set in the ground so no one would trip and fall over it. So I have I have this up there. Mike is going to outline the 25 foot line. Us. He's auditioning for my job. 25 foot? And then this one along the other side. The other side. Yeah. Oh boy. Here's this. Yeah, it's nice and big. It's a big one. Chuck, is something going to get added to the plan to document on our side? So they're, find they're what, at how the to find the bounds? Yes, our ASPO okay. plan always asks to show us where the bounds are, and even though they're using rebar for some of these, they'd have to locate those also. Okay, but can I mean, can it be noted that bounds are constructed of rebar? Yep. Yep. Buried rebar. That would be. That sort of little note. I know. I, can make a big you know, I, when you asked that, I just thought, you know, the guy, the survey person doing the as built plan would have, know whatever language he's going to use. And if I just said, can you just mark them? So is it just going to be three? But sometimes buried you, might rebar. you might just say, you I mean, might. You don't, I mean. Okay, I'll make sure. But uh, it's here just going to be three here. Thanks, I, Mike. And um, oh, I'm looking at. It goes through the shed. What we're looking at is a 25 foot line right here. And then it comes down this way. And here's the property line. And we're always asked for one visible granite bound at that point and this point here. What's happening in between is, you know, this is a. So for this project, we did ask the owner to um, get in and pull out some invasives that were along the stream bank, which is along this area right here. And also in there, this guy, uh, you know, very aggressive. He went in there, and I think within a couple of weekends, he had some huge piles out on his lawn. And he uh, really, you know, took ownership in that request that the commission made. So I'm not sure where this line is here. And, and we're not identifying them, but they're asking along here 
for sure, which is long, that those can be buried rebar. So 25 feet as long as they're buried rebar. So people want to be asked for that also. Oh, this project. Yeah. We can bury these and then just put the stake there. Is that acceptable to the commission? Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't need. I don't think that needs to be a change of plan because I don't think that is a change. Um, because it says either or in our regulations. So. Dave, thank you for coming tonight. So. That's that's what I have to say. Do we need to make any kind of motion for that? Yeah, you can make a motion to accept her request to bury um, revive stakes within the lawn area. I make a motion to accept the request as we've discussed. Second. All those in favor? Great. All right. Um, now, old news business. Um, are you here for Glenmere Circle or anything? You don't recognize Liquidy. that guy? He's here for uh, Liquidy. Uh, oh. No, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't. He's, <laughs> he's the guy that did the whole presentation that when we were at oh, the senior center. Oh, hi, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah. <coughs> wow. Sorry, yeah. He did look sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Um, <coughs> this is good. It's covering There's yep. 20 minutes before this starts. We still haven't done Strawberry we have Hill. Things on the yeah, yeah. Strawberry Hill. And yeah. Glenmere? Yeah. yeah. And Glenmere. Do you have any questions? No, okay. I did I did have a change on Strawberry Hill Lane. And I added that. You asked me to put in the silver maple? Yep. Under proposed work, yeah. Right. The proposed work is to remove that and I left in the vegetation that I, is I being noticed that we talk about a vertical pool. The vertical pool the vertical pool. The yeah, but then there's a little sentence that says it was decommissioned. Okay, I didn't see that. I didn't find that. So, yeah, 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 I added that to it, that. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I was looking it's at that, too. Declassified. Declassified. Yeah, declassified. Yeah, declassified. Yeah, declassified. Yeah, whatever. It may not be decommissioned, that, but it's That should be mentioned every single time. <coughs> no, I, I think it was awful. You know, I looked into that. You know who signed that? Mike Abel? Right there. <laughs> Seriously? Yep, yeah, Mr. <laughs> Thornberry. <laughs> Speaking I of Mike Gable, that we, Mitch, that. speaking of Mike Gable, it's gone. Did we get Plus anything we're back? Alive. I'm not going to get that. Later. Chuck, did we get anything back? Uh, speaking of Mike Gable, did we get anything back from DEP about the superseding order on Zero Arcadia, or Zero Low Metal, about the additional trees? They're, they're okay because? with both of those things. Okay. And uh, that was sent to me by the, uh, the, de the developer. So okay. Mike, Mike signed off on both of those. Have they taken down the additional trees yet? I don't know. I think they're... <laughs> At this point, they're probably waiting for the house to be built, so it could yeah. be really interesting. But yeah, they had a, a window of opportunity, and that that's long gone. Yeah. So with the changes that I made to the order of conditions for H Strawberry Hill, I will make a motion to issue the order of conditions as amended. Second. All those in favor.
six trees and grind the stumps mm -hmm. and grind the stumps of two additional trees that were on that lot. This is Bob Moses' job. I think Bob, uh, uh, did you in? I think so. Yeah, I don't think he came in. So um, Bob Moses has done work for us in the past and he usually does a good job uh, as a crane. Uh, this is probably something where they don't even have to get into the back of the, of the lot, so they do most of the stuff with the crane. I wrote in uh, uh, determination of applicability, and it just the only special condition outside of our regular boilerplate is the fact that I'd like to inspect the site when it's complete. That's all we're asking for. Do we need to make a motion? We just signed. We, we already issued I thought a we, I thought we did so. issue a negative. Right, so you I mean, we're going to do something. I mean, it's it's it feels I make a motion to sign the... Make a motion to negative. issue. Why don't you do that? <laughs> we already issued a negative determination. We have to... You can close, uh, and then you would issue. But why don't you issue again? Why? All right, I'll, I'll issue again our negative determination. Yeah, you so a second? I'm hoping I can allow that. All those in favor? Madam Chair. You don't have to close. No. All right. But I always get yelled at for that because I said it all. Yeah. Let's close Tweet the bricks. I, I, I'm the one that I'll I know. You don't ever need to close. Why those. do you have to close on a determination of applicability? It's not a public hearing. It's a meeting. Well, see, it, just sound, it just feels right that you do both. And I think we did both in Boxshirt each time. Well, and that's kind of how I, I was brought up in a way in a sense so we're closing but you guys Anika you can tell me where you had been before here and where they didn't close and then they just issued here it's never been clear Chuck it's never been clear yeah well we're making it clear we're always closing first and no. then issuing no matter what it is I agree with Mike <laughs> we never did Dissension it. Dissension on the ranks here. You know, you guys wait two weeks to say whatever. You get just a little bit of TV time, and I'm giving you another <laughs> sentence. So, come on. We're on TV. Yeah, I know. All right, so it's 10 of, and our next... Uh, our next meeting is, that is gonna, not our next agenda item is, is scheduled for 9 o'clock. So we're going to take a short recess for 10 minutes and be back in our chairs at 9. <laughs> I think. It would take too long. Five bucks recess if you can't make it. <laughs> recess. We'll be back okay. in about five minutes. Uh, just a fair one.
The DP file number is uh, 270. Tent, 2325 Lakeview Avenue and Eaton Street, map 17 and 18, lot, lots 131, 274, 275, 276, and 1 and 2, Federa Eaton Lakeview Development, LLC. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for the record, uh, Chris Sparadis from the Engineering and Survey Office of Williams and Sparadis. Looks like we have a screen up, so I'm not sure if we're going to need uh, a plan. I'll just put it up in the camera here real quick. So we have another. Sheet, uh, when you see the plan set 
um, uh, will be submitted prior to the next uh, prior to the next meeting. Uh, the second item uh, had to do with providing a plan showing updated snow storage areas. On our plan set, the snow storage area is shown on our landscaping plan. Uh, let's try to just go forward. It's um, uh, the landscaping plan is on sheets 10 and 11. Okay. So on sheet 10, uh, sheets 10 and 11, there are various locations where we've uh, called out uh, snow storage uh, in various uh, landscape islands. I'll come back to this one in just a second. Uh, if you could just go uh, forward one sheet. Uh, we're also proposing uh, snow storage areas in other locations along the property. Uh, but you're going to see that on the on the revised plan there, uh, snow storage areas are uh, are missing in certain key locations. We talked a little bit about this at the last uh, the last meeting. This is a comment that we received um, uh, from the town's reviewing civil engineer, and uh, the wish uh, was that in those areas that are uh, proposed to be restored with low and seed, that slope away from the parking lots, uh, they didn't want us um, st uh, storing snow in those areas because as the snow melts. Uh, it wouldn't make its way to the parking lot first, where it would be uh, where it would be treated. Uh, so, on our revised plan, uh, we we revised the uh, snow storage areas uh, so that um, uh, we are limiting snow storage to areas that slope towards the parking lot, which will ensure that the snow melt will be treated through the stormwater management system. Then, of course, uh, as we've said many times, once the snow storage areas are at capacity, uh, snow will be removed from the central property in accordance with GP snow disposal guidance. Uh, and we have a copy of that guidance in our stormwater report uh, that was uh, initially submitted with our notice of intent. Can you go back, uh, check one slide to sheet 10. Now, down at the bottom here, I had highlighted um, a couple of um, things. Perfect. I nailed it. Um, we had highlighted a couple of uh, a couple of areas down uh, down here. This was a, an area that was a, a little bit of a concern because we were uh, relatively close uh, to the wetland uh, resource area. You know that being Walker's Brook, which runs beyond our property line. Uh, of course, uh, we were not proposing uh, as part of our project to uh, disturb uh, within 25 feet of the wetland line along uh, Walker's Brook. Uh, but there was a little grass area here. The last thing we had talked about. Uh, uh, the wishes of the ZBA uh, and other town officials to uh, to provide a couple of loading areas uh, so that when people are moving in and out of the rentals, a um, um, loading truck can be uh, accommodated somewhere. And we had shown a couple of uh, potential loading uh, spaces in front of the dumpsters, one here uh, and one here. Unfortunately, um, when that when the revised plan had gone through the um, town departments, uh, the fire chief um, uh, commented that uh, if uh, a loading vehicle was in this area, they would be encroaching a little bit uh, into the 24 foot wide aisle. And so we scrapped um, that idea and instead uh, thought about um, reconfiguring uh, this area here because the dumpsters are uh, located here and we have a, a fairly large grass strip here. Uh, we thought about moving these two dumpsters um, over a little bit, which would open up this area here so that we could slide this loading space uh, back into this area here. Uh, we're, still, um, we're still evaluating uh, that possibility. Uh, the alternative is going to be to dedicate, um, as part of our parking plan, uh, to dedicate uh, approximately four parking spaces on either side of the project at these locations uh, where uh, they would be uh, restricted parking during those events where someone might need to bring a, a, a loading vehicle on site. And so folks would be able to park overnight, uh, but during the day um, we would uh, restrict access to these, uh, to one of two of these locations um, that would allow uh, a loading truck uh, to come in temporarily and uh, do its business uh, for a tenant and then move on. We're going to finalize that between now uh, and the next meeting. And um, in any event, um, we are still proposing a small snow storage area in this location here uh, because there is a, a portion of this grass strip that does slope and flow 
out to the uh, Avia area. Uh, one of the concerns that uh, Chuck had raised to us was uh, the fear that um, a plow truck could push snow um, right through this uh, grass uh, island here and into the wetland resource area. And so on the revised plan that you're gonna see, we've uh, proposed a, a guard railing system uh, that'll uh, protect um, uh, or stop vehicles from advancing beyond that point at which uh, the land slopes back into the parking lot. So that was how we were addressing the snow storage comment. We were going to update these areas on the plan, and they have been updated. Uh, moving on to number three, uh, provide a tree inventory for tree six inches or greater in diameter at breast height. Uh, so back on January 2nd, uh, we sent one of our field crews out to the site uh, to do the tree inventory. And uh, the information came back to the office uh, and we plotted it up uh, and realized that um, they had only located the trees from the 25-foot zone of natural vegetation out to the 100-foot buffer zone. Uh, and that tree inventory was supposed to go from the wetland line all the way out to the buffer zone. Uh, and so that's the primary reason why uh, we weren't able to, uh, to submit plans ahead of tonight's meeting. And it's really just an update for you because we have to, we have to send them back to locate the remaining trees in, in the 25-foot zone of natural vegetation. Uh, so that tree inventory, if we go back uh, to sheets two and three, uh, the, uh, the trees are most easily uh, and best readable, or, uh, readable on our existing conditions plans, which is, uh, which is on these two sheets. So when you see the, uh, the revised plan set, all the trees uh, will be located uh, and labeled either as uh, deciduous or uh, conifers. Um, the, the, by far, the vast majority, um, interestingly enough, all of the trees that we located that are between 25 and 100 are all deciduous. There weren't, there weren't any conifers. Uh, but they're all um, do, uh, labeled and marked and as, as far as size. And they're also, uh, if it's a tree that, it's, uh, that we're proposing to take, uh, we have an X through it. And then we've uh, done an accounting of the number of trees that we're proposing to take. Uh, and then next time when, when I come to see you um, in, in our, our letter that summarizes it, we're going to summarize uh, the number of trees that we're proposing to take and then uh, how we're proposing to offset that uh, by providing um, new plantings of trees, uh, shrubs. I, think I alluded to it a little bit last time. And again, our mission uh, is to uh, try to honor, uh, to the best of our ability, uh, the policy of the Conservation Commission uh, with regard to tree replacement. Uh, item number four uh, was adding uh, street sweeping uh, to the operation and maintenance plan. Uh, when I went back to the office and uh, looked it up, this is one of the items uh, that was raised last time. Uh, we do have it um, accounted for in the operation and maintenance plan. Uh, specifically, it's in the long-term pollution prevention plan that's already in our stormwater report. It calls for parking lots and driveways uh, to be uh, swept as needed on the same schedule as the uh, deep sump catch basins. With special attention given to the spring and late fall. Uh, so that information was already in the, uh, in the stormwater report. Okay, uh, can you just uh, elaborate? It's, it's, it's going to coincide with basins. Because often you're only checking them and they're not getting clean. So, right. So I can tell you the, the specific language that's in the stormwater yeah. report that we included states that uh, that uh, parking lots and driveways to be swept as needed on a monthly average, with special attention given to spring, March slash April, and late fall, November slash December. So um, as needed on a on a monthly average, uh, which means that um, you know once a month we'll take a look at the site and you know make a determination as to whether or not you know we believe it needs to be uh, swept at that time, uh, and of course with special attention after the after the winter and then leading into the winter to make sure that we're uh, we're completely clean coming out of the winter and going into the winter. That's the wording in the uh, in the offer and the long term yeah, progression plan. I'm glad I'm not reading that, so, uh, but. But you're assuring me that at least as you come out of the winter, you're going to sweep it once, for sure, and prior to going into the winter. Yes, those are, those are um, okay. automatic ones. So, yeah, so I wouldn't expect that you have to do the catch basin cleanup. That's just monitored, and then when it's needed, you would call someone in. That's right. If you were to look at the long-term pollution prevention plan, um, uh, that's uh, inspection only. 
one of the sums of the catch basis have deep sums, and one that deep sum is uh, measured to be half full. That's the trigger for uh, for cleaning out the, uh, the deep sum catch basis. So we, we have a typical um, operation maintenance plan kind of advisory paragraph in our order of conditions. Okay. And it, it does ask something like you're going to, it, it just requires that you, that you clean out the cash basins uh, four times a year and then request less. But if, if I'll look at that, yours, between now and the next meeting, and if we could just make sure that we have some milestones in there that have to get done, then, then I'm okay with just monitoring it. Because I think since I've been here, there's a lot of times you're asking for these things to be cleaned out, and then it's not needed. It's right. You just have to determine whether that's uh, you know, needed or not. So maybe for visual, uh, four times to check it each year for the first two years, and then after that, it can drop down to an ASCII basis. But we'll look at that. Yep. That's been our experience, too. Even on, um, on sites that we call levels, land uses with higher potential pollutant loads, like a car dealerships and things like that, we monitor a lot of projects like that. And it's, it's surprising that if, if they sweep in the, in the spring and then in the fall, um, there's very little accumulation in the, um, in the deep sumps. Right, and we do have a car. Uh, we have a car plot in uh, under our order of conditions, and that's exactly what we found. It right. really wasn't needed to the extent we were asked for. It, so. Right. so that was item uh, number four. Number five uh, was showing the drip edge on the uh, on the tree that's located between the common law line that we share between number 114 Street and lot A. So that would be on uh, sheet three, one more, uh, one more down here. So uh, when the field crew went out there again, uh, uh, they actually had to go back one section. Yeah. Right, right over here. Right over here. Right over here. <laughs> We've shown the symbol um, based on, uh, we have a way to uh, that show the drip edge based on the, uh, the size of the diameter of the tree. Uh, it's a 24 inch uh, diameter tree, I believe, um, if I remember the, the field crew locations correctly. Uh, but um, when they go back to locate, the, um, the additional trees between the wetland line and the 25-foot uh, ZNB. Uh, we'll make sure to get the actual drip edge of that particular tree, and that will be shown on the plan. So this shape, if you will, uh, will either get a little bit larger or shrink based on the actual measurement of the field. Uh, number six, uh, identify leaf litter, leaf litter area. Uh, during the sidewalk, there was a leaf litter area observed um, behind uh, uh, behind the existing, uh, this is a, a two-family home uh, here. So it was somewhere out of this area. <coughs> that's an area that, uh, that, our, that our field crew did um, locate by survey, and so that's going to show on the plan. There'll be a note um, that states that uh, the leaf litter in that area will be removed as part of the proposed development. So those were the six items that Chuck had mentioned. Um, there were a few other items um, that I just wanted to touch on real quick that uh, were additional questions that came up last time. And a couple of them I think came from the audience and a couple more from, uh, from members. Uh, you may recall that um, um, in our landscaping plan we had proposed a Princeton elm tree. Uh, and that species, uh, we did change that to, um, uh, to a red maple. Uh, we talked about uh, inspection and uh, including inspections or uh, how to operate and maintain uh, some of the drainage piping underneath the parking lot. Uh, and what we're proposing uh, to do in our operation maintenance plan is that when the catch basins um, are clean, uh, that we will flush um, all the drain lines at that time as well. So before the catch basins are cleaned as part of that regular cleaning schedule, we'll flush the pipes first. Uh, and then clean out the catch basins. We talked about the lighting fixtures on the decks of units nine through twelve. That was that were on lot A. Um, if you want to, I, I I have a picture, but I can bring it up later. Okay, yeah, I'll show it to you now. This this is this is why I mentioned that. Uh, I don't know if I can make this bigger, but can you see how bright that light is? That's my fear. Right. This now this gentleman didn't go and do this on purpose. He just maybe picked the wrong one out at Home Depot. But that's the kind of light that's and that's maybe it doesn't show that, but what I'll tell you. Okay. Right. Kind of we were amazed by how bright that is and if there's four 
that brightness. That's my fear. That would change overlooking that. Okay. So, so uh, let me tell you what we did. Um, we went back and we did some we did some research on um, what's the smallest um, you know wattage um, LED uh, wall fixture that uh, that would do and uh, what we needed to do. Uh, and if you scroll down to the to the layout plan, it shows that uh, the unit that unit is on this lot here. Yeah, that's a good shot there. Uh, so there are decks on uh, two, three, and then the fourth one is on the side on uh, unit number twelve. Uh, but what we're proposing, uh, we selected a 20-watt a uh, LED wall light, and it, um, it would get attached uh, against the house uh, in the deck area. And what we did in our photometric, on our photometric plan that we normally just you know, exclusively you know, use to, um, to model the street lights, uh, we added uh, the photometrics associated with uh, with these uh, particular fixtures, and so uh, to the out, out, sort of out part of the deck, uh, the maximum foot candle value of the building block that quickly diminishes as you, as you go away um, to, to zero uh, before you even get uh, much further into the backyard. So we believe that we've selected a, you know, a reasonable light that will you know, light up the backyard. And, and is that lighting unit restricted to having that? Is that the highest capacity it could fit inside that? Or uh, so that I don't know. Okay. Um, I can I can uh, I can find out between now and that. I don't know. So it's, it's either go through all that or somehow let the homeowners know that that's the maximum light for what reason why it needs to be uh, such a low voltage okay. out there. I mean, e either or works, but uh, if they could increase that into, you know, a, a 50 watt one, it would be it would be a problem to kind of defeat the whole purpose of us doing this work. So. Uh, last at the last meeting we talked about uh, what happens when we uh, when we take down uh, some of the trees uh, in some of these areas that are close to the zone of natural vegetation. How many trees are left in the zone of natural vegetation? The tree inventory will really spell out for us. Uh, on lot B, which is the lot that's along um, the closest to Walker's Grove, which is the uh, the lot that's uh, closest to Home Depot and uh, Jordan's uh, down at the bottom here. Uh, the land does uh, does slope uh, down, obviously towards uh, towards Walkersburg. And if there are some bare areas there, we talked about this uh, with our team uh, after our last meeting. Uh, there, we don't have any problem uh, uh, helping stabilize areas that might be bare or um, uh, along those lines with uh, either a conservation, a conservation mix of some kind. And um, and we're happy to talk uh, to the commission about. Um, uh, whether or not um, after we remove the trees that are within our limit of work, if there are areas that are completely wide open out to Walker's work, we could talk, we could talk about adding some additional <coughs> plantings in the zone of natural vegetation if, if, that would, if that's what it takes um, uh, to help uh, uh, fill in the gaps in a couple of spots. Uh, so we'll know more uh, once we complete that tree inventory in that zone of natural vegetation. So what, how would we know what wide open means? Is, is it, it, or are we gonna let's say the commission's in charge of, you know, at, at a certain point during the project, we have to go out there and the commission has to agree where more plants would go, more shrubs would go, or if it's just gonna be the casting seed. So I think, uh, I think we have no problem casting seed. Um, I think we'll know a lot more once we, do, once we complete the okay. tree inventory, and then we'll, 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 we'll propose something okay. once that's complete. We spent a lot of time talking about the volume compensation uh, calculations. We did reduce <coughs> the labels on those things to make it uh, more clear, and we to submit that for the record. Uh, and then uh, there was a question regarding uh, the owner of the land uh, beyond uh, beyond Lakeview uh, Avenue. And um, uh, so here's, uh, here's Lakeview, of course. And this property owner, which wraps around here, this is uh, the parent company of Jordan's and Home Depot own, uh, own that land. So after going through my notes, that's all I had uh, since the, you know, from the last meeting. And um, I just wanted to give a quick, quick update that we're, we're very close. Uh, uh, but I wasn't, um, I wasn't able to submit those revised plans in enough time for you folks to see them before the meeting. So um, we'd like to come back again and, and uh, you've had a chance to look at the revised plans. Um, holding uh, there are very few 
titles about the next meeting. So, members of the commission have any questions? I, I mean, this kind of is an overview, and we really haven't had any opportunity to <coughs> to review the information. Um, and we appreciate your your uh, your overview tonight. Um, our last meeting, did, did you think that you would be able to provide that information? Sorry. At, your la at our last meeting, if you were going to be able to provide that information at this point? Yeah, so we thought we were going to be able to get this, the information submitted a week ago, but when, when I plotted the trees and I realized that we had a big swap missing, I think we just couldn't get that, sure. that information you know, completed in time. So it would have been incomplete, and I didn't want to... Um, would that have affected your whole um, plan, your whole uh, package of plans? Yes, we were planning on submitting a, a, a new a complete, complete okay. Right. I mean, uh, most of the revisions are already done. Um, the only thing left to do is to, up, is to update the trees. So I got you. I, I would imagine within the next week or so we'll be, we'll be uh, you know, ready to drop off on plans. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, Chris, when your attendance starts, how long does it take? How long the construction will start? Once, yeah, when do you, when would you like to start and know how long do you think it's taken to develop this? So I'll let Mr. Pender now answer that question. Just, I'm just curious. It's not important. I just sure. Wondering. Yeah, it, it, we we still haven't decided on the, <clears throat> the the form of construction that we're gonna utilize to build this. Uh, if it's gonna be stick or modular or panel or whatnot, so uh, th that's gonna vary the timeline drastically, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, we'd like to commence as uh, soon as possible. So sure. as soon as we get a permit, uh, we will be phasing the construction uh, on this. So we'll start with the townhouses and complete those before we move on. Uh, there will be some site work being done on the other site while construction is occurring there. We're going to try to do as much of the site work as possible while leaving Lakeview as, as undisturbed as possible until we complete that. But uh, for the most part, um, we haven't really decided on the mode of construction yet. So, that, you know, stick stick build can vary in two to three years, depending on you know how we phase it out. Um, module a lot quicker. We can be done within a year and a half for everything. So, yeah. on a modular, can you do do the larger buildings? Or sure, do they yeah. come in as oh, modular yeah. as well? Yeah, they do hotels and modular now. It's, uh -huh. Yeah, it's popular. Yeah, it's popular. It's um, believe it or not, it's actually a better quality of construction because it's thirty percent more material. It's built in a controlled environment, so they're they're built sturdier because they have to be transported. So yeah, we just have we're, we're weighing the cost benefit there. So we have to set. They build aircraft carriers in modular. That's right. Oh. That's right. Also, oh, should be easy. Yeah, well, there's always been that foregone conclusion from years past where modular was a right. secondary construction type, but it's not, you know. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I, have a, I have a question about um, the landscaping plan. Um, I understand that, you know, the remainder of the trees are going to be surveyed um, and put on this plan. I guess a part of me... Um, and I'll just throw it out there to see what uh, other people think on the commission. But um, I'd really like to see clearly specified, and may, if it's here, please point it out to me. Maybe I've missed it in the many notes. Is um, how much of the landscaping is going to be untouched and left as 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 is. Um, especially um, east, um, sort of behind the condos, between the condos and the wetlands. Yeah, yeah. the townhouses. <coughs> the townhouses. Um, you know, especially in the areas where those dashed lines are showing the setbacks. How much of those dash lines are going to stay native as is vegetation, and how much of all this open area sure, that's is going to be lawn? Uh, as a broad brush, um, every uh, 
uh, every tree between the wetland line and 25 feet away from the wetland line remains untouched. Okay. That's as a broad brush. That's that's what we've provided uh, in an effort to uh, honor the 25 foot zone of natural uh, uh, of vegetation. And there are some areas where we're providing uh, more than 25, uh, but there aren't many of them. Uh, one example is if we go over to lot B. Uh, along the east side of the project. For example, uh, where, where we have uh, the parking lot here and the, the sections of here that require a retaining wall, we're almost 35 feet away um, from the wetland in, in those cases. So there are, there are many more trees. Uh, there's a much larger buffer, not for example here, than anywhere else in the project. But that'll be very clear. Uh, any trees that, um, that we've located by survey that are to be saved will be identified as such, and um, that'll, it'll be very clear on the landscaping plan. Okay. I'm interested in looking at that. Any other questions from the commission members? Chuck, do you have any other questions? I don't have any other questions. Any comments? Questions from the community? Okay. I move we continue this notice of intent to the next meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? So stay tuned, folks. Um, we'll have more information and we'll have an opportunity to review the new set of plans. Um, hopefully, that will come before. You'll send those in to Chuck. Yes, well, well before the next day. I believe you're next looking at the 12th of February. No. No? The 13th? <coughs> the 23rd, yeah, right? Yeah, the 23rd. 23rd. We have another meeting this month. January. Are you oh, making that meeting? Oh, this month. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We can meet, we meet twice a month. So if you can get things together in two weeks, we can meet That's back right. here. And uh, which is a good thing to do. Like to do. The 23rd. Yeah. Yeah. It's the second, second fourth Wednesday of every month, typically. Right. Yeah, so, so uh, like I said, we're very, very close. I mean, all the changes have been made except for uh, these additional trees that we yeah. so, um, so I can get to the plan within the next week easily. Sure. So we would need them by next Wednesday to go out and pack it. Thursday at the latest, but you can just call me and I'll hold the packet for one day. Okay. Um, that's a packet to the Conservation Commission, and I think I have a request to send that also out to the, uh, at least one of butter. So we always ask for my kind of copy, um, but uh, but um, yeah. So we'll be doing that with any any submittal. So. Sure, that's not a problem. Yeah. So if, if we can get that by next week, we're good. We're on. We're on for the next okay. meeting. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yep. So do you have any conflicts at night? Okay, so pretty much everything on our agenda tonight was going to just shift over, so we'd probably be early 9 o'clock again. Okay, no problem. I expect there'll be more things in front of you. But I, the, we're not setting I don't the time. Wanna, yeah, I don't want to yeah. set a, a timeline. We had a huge gap tonight. Um, in fact, we were going to take a big recess, but unfortunately we had more things to discuss it that came happens. up. Yeah. Um, I don't think we would like to put this off until 9 o'clock. I think that was a little too late, so we'll, we'll take we, a look we, we at what. We go over the agenda, and, and we post it on Thursday, uh, the week before the meeting, which will be on the following Wednesday. So I don't want to give you guys a, a, you know, a time frame like we did the last time. Just curious is the reason why you wouldn't put it first. Uh, because there's, it, there'd be other things that we could do very quickly, and I, I would. A couple of these things have been. Yeah. Also waiting forever, and. Uh, okay. I just asked. It seemed like there's a whole lot here to. Yeah, it's it's you know. Well, we do have some things to look. At. We have quite a few things to look at. 
and it would um, be a big order. Yeah, so yeah. if there was something smaller, we wouldn't like them to wait that long. That's kind of how we do it. No problem. Yeah. It's, no, it's a great I it's a good Becky's question. putting it together, so direct your emails and comments to, <laughs> to me. To the chair. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No, it's you. It's you. And I, I'm just hoping that you'll get it out to anyone else who needs it. But that just makes it easier for me, just one person. And okay. Oh, okay. And okay, great. I will. All right. Thanks, Chris. Okay, um, we have no other items to discuss. Right. Not in. No. Make a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Meeting is adjourned.